Now, I don't know about you, but rather than seeing toys being 3D printed, why not build a machine? And for that, we're going to review the Anycubic Cobra Neo. And for 200 quid, you're getting some decent tech in this. But if you would like a chance to win one for just two quid, then I've set up a raffle to give you a chance to win one. All the proceeds will be going to charity, specifically the Samaritan's Purse. They've been doing a fantastic job in both Syria and Turkey, building temporary hospitals and looking after the people there. Do check that out in the description, as well as any discount discount codes for this machine. Let's begin the review. Straight out of the box things are looking great. It comes as just four pieces. The Y axis on the base and the X and the Z axis just here. The other two parts are simply the spool holder and the screen. It came with a nice selection of tools, a spare nozzle and all the bolts are separately packed into their sizes. But within 20 minutes I had this thing together and now I'm ready to plug in and turn it on. You'll also notice there are no adjustment screws to leveling the bed. That's because it's completely automated. So if I I press the button and I'll turn it to go down to leveling and then click auto leveling. As you can see there's a little proximity sensor and basically if there's any differences in the height it'll compensate for it in the g-code. So I've immediately started printing and I noticed that it wasn't getting onto the bed properly. Whilst it was printing I was able to change the z offset which means you can adjust the z height mid print. I've got mine at 0.8 millimeters. You'll also notice how incredibly quiet it is whilst printing. So I'm just looking at the print quality and it's looking good, but I think it's a little hot. So I'm gonna see if we can adjust the nozzle temperature mid print. So there we are, it's looking promising with those settings. You can see the difference between the two sides. So another key feature is the magnetic build plate. This should simply lift off. And then by flexing the build plate, things peel off easily. The magnets are also very strong. So you can see on the skirt where I adjusted the Z height, it should come off and you can see halfway where I adjusted the settings. So for these tests we're using polyethylene terephthalate glycol, otherwise known as PETG. So I'm using a generic cheap version, specifically this one, but I've also ordered a very good branded one and we'll compare the two. The reason is because this is a direct drive, it will handle PETG and TPU really well. A lot of other printers, including the Ender 3, use a Bowden system. Typically with those materials you need quite a bit of retraction. And the problem with Bowden systems is that when they do retract, there is a little bit of flex and give so you don't get accurate retraction. So a direct drive fixes those problems. Now polyethylene terephthalate is also what plastic bottles are made from. It's considered to be a very strong polymer and has excellent wear resistance, chemical resistance and energy absorbing properties. So for mechanical parts and high stress parts, this is probably the best type of filament to use. However, getting the settings right can be very difficult, especially on these cheaper brands. As I've tried to improve the settings to print this stuff, I have noticed some problems. So one of the problems with this machine is the fact that it's only got one fan. That means it's blowing cold air to cool down the filament on one side. That means one side is gonna look quite nice on your print, whilst the other side may be susceptible to something called stringing. If I show you the roof of this Benchy, for example, it seems quite nice, but if we turn it around, where it didn't get enough cooling, you can see the filament started to droop. Also, with these larger prints, I'm noticing inaccuracies with the bed leveling. So despite leveling the bed several times, you can see it's not quite close enough here when extruded. And on the opposite side, we've gotten too close. And from what I can tell, there's no manual way of solving that issue. Overall, this machine seems to be printing very accurately. You can see in the middle of this cog, I've pressed in a bearing. That bearing was a nice tight fit at just 0.05 millimeters bigger than the original model. All right, so I've run into a spot of bother. As you can see, we're nearly two thirds of the way through and clocking up nearly 24 hours of print time. And this spool of filament is about to run out. So fortunately, just in the nick of time, my new filament has arrived. It's an Australian company called Extruder. So I'm not sponsored by Extruder at all. It was recommended to me by a friend. Billy from Savage Strength Equipment. He's a very talented one-man band manufacturer making gym equipment. Now Billy very cleverly uses 3D printers within his manufacturing process and achieves things that otherwise would have to be injection molded. I'll leave a link to his page in the description, but very inspiring and well worth looking at. So to save the print, what I'm hoping to do is to splice this filament with that one. And it means that the settings are all gonna change as well. So I'm gonna to have to adjust the settings as it's printing. So whilst we've still got some filament left, I'll take that off. Everyone loves the slinky. Trim the end of that off. Now I'm gonna very crudely use a lighter to heat these filaments up and weld them together. Ooh. That 
So far, so good. Well, there we go. Let's see if it works. There it is, about to go through. Here it comes through now. Yeah, that should be okay now. So I've basically had to drop it to the settings that was recommended on the box. And whilst I was playing with the settings, I was looking at how each layer was being deposited, looking carefully to see how runny it was and whether it was reaching the sides or not. Here we are, results are in. That's not too bad, I don't think. And just to emphasize my point, this was the side with the fan, and that's the side that is shielded from the fan. So still some internal stringing, consistent with the type of material. I wonder if you've guessed what this is gonna be yet. So Billy also advised to use a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. This whole handle print should take no more than 21 minutes. Yep, I'm pleased with those results. So let's try and pop a bearing into this then. Well, it's certainly getting there. Alright, let's begin putting this thing together. Alright, so I have cheated a little bit. I laser cut this part just because it was quicker and it's stronger made from wood. Alright, so I'm going to attach this part here. Alright, now this bit slots on top. Alright, so now I need to put these parts in. They go in here. this side so this part here you can see I've put a load of hooks with inside it they look like this and if you're interested I've put a link to the Amazon link where I got these from if you feel like making this machine yourself so I need to screw this part down now and now I think it's pretty much finished Okay, you're about to see the results of what have been many hours of me obsessing over this mechanism. What I really want to do is redesign the whole thing. It's kind of working. Let me know what you think. So there you are, it's a sock knitting machine. I'm a bit far off making my own socks, but I've learned a heck of a lot doing this. So if you're gonna build one yourselves, here are my brief notes. You only need to use one of these guides. I've got one here, the other side I had to block off the hole. The edges of the needle holder have to be all rounded, otherwise the yarn gets stuck on it. And it's helpful to have something called a starter to get the thing going. And then what I did with this is I tied a knot in it and dropped some weights inside. But to make this a bit better, what I really want is the needles to be going up higher. You can see I made a whole load of adjustments to the prints, including this one. This was the original handle of the machine, but I was worried that this was just gonna break off too easily. And I think now that I've got a good idea of how this machine works, I probably would design a brand new one. So what are my conclusions? Well, a machine like this can cost thousands of pounds. So the fact that a machine like this, which only costs 200 quid, can build something like that, that's fantastic. 
I think for the price, any Cubic have done a really good job with this. But it's obviously not running perfectly and not comparable to a more expensive version. But there's nothing to stop us from adding another fan and putting some shims on that base plate so we're getting it perfectly level. But I think it's got all the best features that you'd want for a beginner. But to be honest, the direct drive, the self-leveling bed, what more do you want in a printer? All right, let's go for it. So if you want to see more development on this, then do let me know in the comment section. If you're interested in anything else that I make, then do subscribe. Maybe I can tempt you into watching this video here. And if not, I encourage you guys to get out there in the real world and forge for yourselves a life worth living. See you in the next episode. Bye.